Book summary Die with Zero, summarized by Ali Abdul. Summary plus notes. If you've got any money left in your bank account by the time you die, you've done something wrong. That's the core message of this book, and it's pretty controversial, but I think Bill backs it up. His first argument is that the money we earn represents life energy. Money equals life energy. We all need to make and spend money to survive. Buy food, pay rent, cover the bills. Once we have covered basic expenses, we use our leftover time and money to buy life experiences like going traveling, reading books, going to the cinema, etc. Beyond basic survival, life is about having fulfilling, meaningful experiences. Maslow's hierarchy of needs illustrates the different levels of pretty well. Now, in an ideal world, we directly trade in our life energy in the form of work for fulfilling experiences. But in the real world, money is the middleman. We need to trade in life energy for money. So we can A. Survive B. Afford fulfilling experiences. Bill argues that most people focus way too much on saving money. Even as they get older, they carry on trading in their valuable time. For all for their cash they'll never spend. Let's say you die at the age of 85 with 10,000 k left in the bank. That money represents two things. First, the extra several months you worked to earn that 10k, to all the experiences that you didn't spend that money on, holidays, amazing meals, or maybe the most valuable thing a few months extra of retirement. Bill would say that all the life energy you traded has basically been wasted. You sacrificed so much of your precious time to get it, and now it's just gathering dust. The antidote for most people, says Bill, is to spend more money when you are wrong. 1. Why you should save less. There are three main reasons for why saving less, especially when we are young. Increase earning power, memory dividends, and old age. Let's break those down. 1. Reason 1. Increase earning power. The first reason for investing in experiences early is that our earning power generally increases as we get older. So what seems like a big chunk of money when we are 20 years old is much less significant when we are 40 years old with a house, some kids, an established career, a lot more money coming in. $20 buys you less and less happiness because you take the small things for granted. food. Cinema, cinema tickets, books, and start focusing on big money things like a new car or fixing up your house. So do not some so do not doing something relatively cheap when you are 18 years old to save money is to save money is like ten dollars from your pocket's money to pay rent. It makes no difference to the adult, but it will make the, the kid miserable. So don't obsess about saving $10 here and there when you are young. You'll get way more enjoyment from spending that money right now than in 30 years time. Reason 2. Memory Dividends Unlike material possessions, which seems exciting at the beginning but then often depreciate quickly, experiences actually gain in value over time. They pay what I call memory dividend. Bill Perklins. Here is the idea. Every year, good experiences we had in the past give us a return on investment. That's because all of these experiences create memories. Let's say you go on an amazing two-month hike through Italy with your friends when you were 20 years old. You'd probably have at least 50 years to enjoy those memories. Talk about the trip whenever you hang out. Compare that with hustling at work for all your 20s and 30s to save up money and then going on trip to Italy when you were 40. Sure, you'll more be more financially secure, but you'll have missed out on almost 20 years of good memories, extra life experiences, and group bonding. The longer you wait, the less time you give your experiences to earn compounding and trust. Reason 3. Old Age This graph illustrates how, as we get older, even though our spending power usually increases, and we can afford to do expensive things, our actual ability to do all that stuff steadily decreases. We can't travel as far, do tough physical activities like skiing, and we have less energy. So it makes us so it makes sense to spend a decent chunk of money on cool experiences, long-distance travel, moving countries, rock climbing, 
were while we are still fairly young. 2. Common Objections Let's discuss some common objections to the idea of saving less money. A. What if I run out of money before I die? This is called longevity risk. Nobody wants to die early, but no, wants to die, but no one wants to die after their retirement money runs out either. But here is the thing, most people who do save actually save way too much and spend less during their retirement than they thought. Bill, sit, Bill cites a bunch of figures and studies in his book about knowing your peak. Essentially, when, should, when you should say, stop saving money and actually retire. I won't replicate all of his collections here. I won't replicate all of his calculations here. But Bill's main point is that we fear running out of money a lot more than it's actually likely to happen. People who save for the future tend to save up too much and wait until too late in their lives to spend it on fulfilling experiences, if at all. Once you are in the habit of working for money to live, the thrill of making money exceeds the thrill of actually living. Bill Perkins Big caveat. This all assumes you are a reasonable hire. This all assumes you... This all assumes you are a reasonably high earner with disposable income and savings. If you're not, please don't take the book too seriously. B. What about the kids? Isn't dying with zero really selfish? What about leaving money for your kids? The problem is, if you only give away your money when you die, your kids will be 6 to 70 when they get their inheritance. And at that age, they already have a job, decent earning power and their own savings. A big windfall won't be massively helpful to them, relatively speaking. But if you give them that money when they are 25, 35, that windfall will be ridiculously helpful. With a big chunk of cash at that age, your kids can put down a deposit on a house, start their own company, afford to have their own kids. Pursue interesting careers instead of working horrible jobs to make rent. Don't wait until you die to give money away to your kids. If you're going to do it, do it when you are alive and when they are younger, when the, mo when the money will be most effective. See, what about charity? The same reason applies for charity. Charity needs money right now. People are dying in the world right now. So giving your money sooner rather than later is a good idea. Especially if you stop certain problems like climate change from getting even worse. Check out the charity research website, GiveWell, if you want your money to go as far as possible. 3. Actionable Advice So overall, we should be a little less concerned with saving up loads of money and instead try to gain more experiences, especially when we are young. Let's look at two concrete tips on how to do this. Tip 1. Time bucket your life. You need three basic resources for good life experiences, free time, money and health. You have different levels of these at different points in your life. 20 to 30 years old, you have money, you have somewhat time and you have health as well. 60 plus years old, you have money, you have time and health. When you are, when you, when you are young, you are pretty broke, but a time millionaire. In middle age, you've got a decent balance of health, wealth, and free time. In your old, you usually have enough time and money, but you're not as healthy as you need to be. So if you really want to cycle across Asia, do it before you're 50 years old, when you're still fit enough. When to have, want to have kids before you're 30, stick it down and you're the 20 to 30 category. And if there are expensive things you'd like to do someday but aren't a priority right now, put them down for later, when your earnings will, when your earnings will have increased and the cost wouldn't be such a factor. Remember, not all experiences can wait. If there is a band you really want to see live, do it a sap while they are still around. Tip 2. Be bold, not foolish. Take your biggest risks when you are young and don't have much to lose. You have more time to build yourself back up if you fail, but a whole lifetime to enjoy the profits if the risk pays off. The risk reward ratio is asymmetric and with the reward really in your favor. Let's say you gamble $1,000 on starting a small business when you are 20 and it fails. You can easily earn that money back in the future, but if the business takes off, it might make you a millionaire. The same goes for moving to a new city or some other big life decisions with potentially big advantages. Bill points out that the downside of not even taking a chance is emotional, potentially a lifetime of wondering what if. 
There is a great sense of pride at having pursued an important goal wholeheartedly. If you have given something you all, if you have given something you are all, you will get a lot of positive memories out of the experience no matter what happens. Bill Perkins. But when you are older, big financial risks aren't usually worth taking as they can leave you without enough money to retire. You are also likely to have many more responsibilities when you are older like a family and kids to take care of. 4. Potential Weaknesses I really like die with zero, but I've got two caveats to what Bill says. 1. Money equals life energy. Bill's point at the start of the book is that money in your bank account equals life energy. But with a positive income, for example, a small initial effort snowballs and creates more and more wealth effortlessly. That's why MJ DeMarco in Millionaire Fastlane says you should grow money trees, business systems that survive on their own. In theory, you can end up a millionaire with loads in your account without having worked a day past your 25th birthday. Like if you write a book that sells insanely well, then the money you earn doesn't represent significant wasted life energy. In the same way as say, working 50 years in a job you hate. 2. Money gives you optionality. Liquidity. Having easily accessible cash in the bank or in safe investments is a big asset in itself because you can act quickly and decisively if a cool opportunity comes up or if there is a sudden emergency. Basically, savings keep your options open in case you find your dream retirement home in Mexico, want to, have, want to invest in a friend's new company, need to pay for medical bills. Having money in the bank lets you immediately pull the trigger. So, someone might try, rationally and happily keep a lot of money in their bank account until they die just to keep those options open. 5. Conclusion All in all, I massively recommend Die With Zero. Here's the key message. Don't save so much that, don't save so much that you forget to enjoy your life. Thank you.